Okay, that's me. Call me Sir Paul. And I want to ask you, can you tell me about a time when you demonstrated leadership skills? How would you describe it? Were you able to manage that time with your ability to affect some behaviors of your team? I ask these questions because this video will tackle types of power. 10 power tools of leadership. Great approach to leadership and contingency approach to leadership. Let's begin. At the end of this, I expect you to explain power, leadership power, types of power in leadership, power tools of leadership, the two approaches to leadership, the trait and the contingency, in a direct and simple manner. Aside from that, demonstrate the topics interestingly, creatively like this kind of learning mode, for easy comprehension. Last but not the least, though I will be discussing in a direct and simple manner, that will not sacrifice this objective. Provide comprehensive and full information about the four topics that could generate new knowledge through case studies and reasons. The fundamental tool that is being used by any leader is power. John Prescott believed this idea. Leaders must be able to influence their followers towards the higher level of productivity. Of course, it's not as easy as 1, 2, 3 because influencing will depend on numerous variables like personality of the leader, the personality of the followers, the situation, things like that. Types of power. Power itself means the ability to influence other people. In organizational management view, power refers to the capacity to affect the behavior of the subordinate or follower with the control of resources. What are these resources? You'll find that later. And when it comes to leadership power, this is the influence that the leaders have over their followers. So this could be perceived as authority, which is used to get something. A leader is one who inspires people, motivates others to act. And there are common types of power that are the means by which people are influenced. This infographic reveals the count of types of power I will be discussing. And let's have a bird's eye view of them. You see that? And without much ado, Charisma. This is the power that someone holds by charm or solely with the personality. And based on some studies, this power increases the compliance of the followers. And if you have this, there was this study exposed that this is an asset that enhances productivity in the organization. Coercive. This is the power that someone holds through threat or force. And you know what? This is destructive. Evident in the study of Martin because this power employs fear among the followers. This, is all, this can also increase aggressive climate. Probably, this power is just being abused because uh, everything in moderation or balance is good. Connection. This is the power that someone holds with alliance with influential people. On case study on Mindanao, found that the ability to make and demonstrate alliances is strongly significant as it potentially closed gaps in perceptions. But there was this case study telling its downside that this type of power exposed a failing rate of leadership. So the case study is not a short-term case study, but the study was studied for three years or more. So the extent that results exposed kind of solid. Expert. This is the power that someone holds with a set of the skills others don't have. Some studies reveal goodness of this as this motivates the followers to effort for greater performance. But, sad to say that this type of leadership is commonly lacking to public service leaders in the developing countries. I know, the Philippines is part of that and we can do something about it. Information. This is the power that someone holds through possession of the information. Not much studies about this but I found one. The study revealed that followers have powers too. One is informational power. And this is because information is derived from personal knowledge and does not depend on hierarchical position, age, gender, things like that. Legitimate. This is the power that someone holds as the result of a hierarchy in an organization. There was a study revealed that this power increases the reason-based trust in a service climate. Service climate refers to employee perceptions on the practices, procedures, and behaviors that get rewarded. Moral. 
This is the power that someone holds based on principles, beliefs, and behavior. And you know what? There was a research team that performed a study for like uh, 48 years and exposed that leaders who value morality outperform other leaders. Referent. This is the power that someone holds that role models hold. On a study titled, Employees Perceived Use of Leader Power and Implications for Affecting Work Intentions. Leaders who have this type of power have frequently acquired this power over some period of time by modeling the behavior they expect to see in others. Reward. This is the power that someone holds by giving gifts or incentives, and to some extent, with fear and punishments. And why would someone not like receiving gifts? A case study conducted by Lim revealed that bonus, compliments, promotion, significantly keeps SM employees motivated to work. And this type of power reacts more quickly to challenges not the new society is facing. Last, I included this power because I read it, but not commonly discussed in all references. But this additional type of power I want you to know is founder. This power exists when a leader is the founder of the organization or movement. Other refer to this person's power because there is a perception of having a deep knowledge than the others through experience. This type of power is common to business, so becoming an entrepreneur of a successful business gives you founder power. And those are the types of power of leadership. Charisma, coercive, connection, expert, information, legitimate, moral, referent, reward, and founder. Probably, there might be a little confusion on the difference between the leadership power types and tools, but types are preferred characteristics that a leader would like to be, while tools are just like aid or support used by the leader to carry out his or her particular function as a leader. And here are the 10 power tools of leadership. Let's start with the power of appreciation. This acknowledges the good work of the follower. It confirms that the effort is valued. When the work is valued, the performance increases. And this power a leader gives to followers gives energy and motivation to work harder and do more. The power of apology. This is an important ritual. It shows respect and empathy for the wrong person. When the leader makes a mistake, true leader takes personal responsibility above saving face. A real leader step up. A sincere apology can heal injury and it can also raise credibility and build trust. Hmm, the power of choice. It is a powerful word because it has an effect or a return. It avails a person. Effective leaders understand that we positively influence the outcomes of our choices when we constantly remain aware whether we are reacting or responding. The power of collaboration. This expands the system. It enlarges the leader's reach. Instead of just being able to tap into a limited network, there is this access to collaborator's network. There will be surely a good return for the work. Fifth, the power of critical thinking. It is a mode of thinking where there are analysis and assessment to see if the response will be valid. This power will help a leader to identify and reduce risks the organization is facing. It will assist a leader in identifying opportunities to reach the strategic goals. The power of encouragement is the act of cheering somebody to do something. It allows the leader to give support, confidence, or hope to followers, or to give advice so that they will do more, or continue to do the work. Aha! The power of laughter. This boosts followers' engagement and well-being. This helps relieve stress and spurs not only collaboration and creativity, but also productivity and analytic precision. The power of love is pure and decent. It has the ability to heal. When the energy of love takes over, struggle is futile. Leading with love means knowing and caring what inspires and empowers followers. Ninth, the power of optimism is the power to hope. It is a hopeful and positive outlook on the future, on yourself, and the world around you. It is a key part of resilience, the inner strength that keeps a leader to get through hard times. Last but not the least, the power of resilience adapts well 
in the face of adversity, tragedy, or significant sources of stress. A leader with this power can recover well from tough times in order to continue the leadership. Let's recap. The 10 power tools of leadership are appreciation, apology, choice, collaboration, critical thinking, encouragement, laughter, love, optimism, and resilience. On approaches to leadership, it is quite easy to look in hindsight or probably by mere observation at how effective a leader probably based on accomplishments a leader gets. But determining whether or not someone will be an effective leader is a different story. It's a difficult task. And to help organizations select the right person to uh, lead or for the leadership role, numerous scholars have come up with ways to describe and explain leadership. According to the book titled Leadership, A Communication Perspective, 7th edition by Michael Hackman and Craig Johnson, the traits approach and the situational approach, one is contingency approach, are two of the five leadership approaches that evolve in understanding and explaining leadership. Study will show that there are differences or like gaps of traits between millennial leaders and older subordinates or followers. On how do millennial managers lead older employees, it exposed that to resolve conflicts with older subordinates, the importance of soft skills in leadership and strong sense of respect are some attributes to be considered by millennial leaders. Another study revealed that Gen Z employees have current leadership traits like technology-based traits and communication traits that are needed to be accepted to face organization several issues as the recent generation enters the workplace. On contingency theory case study, it was revealed that using the theory, it resolved a difficult situation that puts the director of gallery art to choose among the three people best fit to be the new manager in the expansion of the gallery. It determined which person was the best fit for the position, the tasks, the personnel who will work under the director. First approach to leadership is trait approach. This is actually one of the earliest theories. This approach looks for a series of physical, mental, or personality traits that effective leaders possess. This concentrates on the idea that great leaders are born with the given abilities and not a learned ability. Individuals are brought into this world with all of the characteristics needed to become a great leader. So if you are not born with specific personality traits, in this approach, you are not destined to be a leader. Here you will see a lot of traits, characteristics, attributes, or personality of a born leader under trait approach. From those given traits that are mentioned, as researchers on book titled An Introduction to Organizational Communication by Wrench and Punyanet Carter, we can start to see that research has found a variety of different traits associated with leadership over the years. Notice that there is overlapping, but each list is clearly unique. In fact, one of the fundamental problems with this approach to leadership is that research has provided a never-ending list of personality traits that are associated with leadership. So, no clear or replicable list of traits exists. Moreover, Dean Lord researchers on leadership argued that an individual's personality traits may impact how they behave within specific leadership situations, but that specific personality traits may not be seen across all leaders in all leadership contexts. In that case, the trait approach becomes more out of date and this opens to new approaches to leadership said, one major problem with the trait approach is that no definitive list of leadership traits exists. Due to the large body of research, countless traits are present which makes it more difficult to determine which traits make the most effective leader. So new approaches to leadership came in. These new approaches theorized that leadership was contingent on a variety of situational factors like tasks to be completed, the relationships uh, or interactions between the leader and the follower, and followers' motivation or followers' commitment, things like that. These new theories of leadership are commonly referred to as the situational approaches. And while many theories of leadership fall into this situational approach, only the contingency approach will be briefly discussed here. Contingency approach to leadership was created in the mid-1960s by Fred Fiddler. Fred Fiddler was a scientist who studied the personality and characteristics of leaders. This approach focuses on how specific situations affect a leader's effectiveness and how a leader's ability to adapt can be their most tool in the organization. Moreover, 
The approach states that there is no best style of leadership. Instead, leaders' effectiveness is based on a situation. And this is the result of two factors, leadership style and situational favorableness. The first factor is leadership style. Tindler believed that leadership style is fixed and can be measured using a scale called LPC, which stands for Leadership Preferred Coworker Scale. Now, you need a table to score yourself on the LPC scale. What is this table? So, this is the table that you will be filling in with your answers. But take note that you need to keep in mind that one person that you least like to work with. That's right. No? You heard me right. So, think of one person with whom you could list or you could work least well. That is the person with whom you have the most difficulty getting a job done. So this is the one person like a boss, uh, a subordinate or follower with whom you would least want to work. Now, so you have um, these uh, bif bipolar adjectives like unfriendly, friendly, uh, unpleasant, pleasant, and so on. So after filling in your answers, you will accumulate um, cumulative scores and uh, this can be interpreted whether your leadership style is task oriented one or lead, uh, relationship oriented one or it could be both or mixed the second factor is the situational favorableness so this second factor depends on three distinct factors the first distinct factor is the leader member relationship this is the level of trust and confidence that the team has put in leader so in this situation you may ask yourself with are the leader member relations good or poor next we have the task structure this refers to the type of task a leader is doing so this could be clear and structured or vague or unstructured so in this situation you may ask yourself with is the task doing structured or not and lastly we have the leader leaders position power so this is the amount of power a leader has to direct the group so Fiddler identifies this power as being either strong or weak. So do you have strong or weak power over the team? Now, let me teach you how to use this approach. Ready? Step 1. Identify your leadership. Remember the LPC scale I presented a while ago? Use that to arrive or generate a cumulative score. Now, how do we interpret the score? So when your score is like 54 or below you are considered task oriented leader you are still effective regardless whether the factor are favorable or not next if you score like 73 or higher you are a relationship oriented leader so you are like people focused leader now how about if your score is found between 55 and 72? They are considered middle LPC scorer. This means the leader could have task-oriented or relation-oriented tendencies. It's like mixed. Step 2. Identify the situation. So you may answer the following questions. First, are the leader member relations good or poor? Next is the task doing structured or not next do you have strong or weak power over the team step three having the first two steps they are put together to describe the leader so practical examples would be a search contest so this contest is the best lrmd is implemented where your team is supposed to produce locally developed learning resources so you have not worked with this team for more than two months let's say and know that you are not normally open with them so the leader member relations are therefore poor now the amount of information you have about the criteria or mechanics of the contest is not sufficient and therefore the task is unstructured however you have strong positional power which you can use to direct and manage the team in this case you would be the best kind of leader if you you are a high LPC leader. Note, if your leadership style doesn't match the situation, that's it. Game over. You need to be replaced and there's nothing you can do about it. So this is actually a disadvantage of Fiddler's contingency model. But interestingly, 
in Fiddler's approach, anyone can be a leader. The only reason a person would be replaced is if the situation is unfavorable to the particular person's LPC rating because you are thinking that one person that you least like to work with. So if that choice changes, there's a greater chance it matches and the contingency approach is very straightforward in prediction. Leaders are described as task-oriented and relationship-oriented. So those who are task-oriented will do better where the environment's tasks are better structured. And those who are relationship-oriented should be placed in situations with less structured tasks. So anyone can be a leader. In all, power can be defined in several ways. However, what is important is the practice of the power by leaders who own it because this power influences the motivation and performance level of the followers as evident on different studies presented. As we progress in our career, we will certainly become leaders. All we need to do is to prepare ourselves by sharpening our skills and working on self-development. Alright, I have some questions for you and these are From the situation you have now, what power or powers do you see or experience from your leader? How that leader manages the leadership power or powers she or he uses to you? Consider this. Certainly, some principals as leaders are possessing traits that are not ideal. Ideal, a concept or standard of perfection we picture in our mind. How do we manage such behavior? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something useful and whatever it is, you are now better than a moment ago.